One step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Those words may ring true again in 2024 when a NASA crew goes back to the moon. Meteorologist KJ Jacobs explains. Boosters in ignition and liftoff of Artemis 1. You feel it in your chest and the sensation of hearing it launch so many seconds after seeing it launch because the speed of light is so much faster than the speed of sound. NASA Ambassador Tony Rice says NASA is analyzing data from its Artemis 1 test flight to the moon to see what they can use or need to change before they send crews to the moon next year. The main difference between Artemis 1 and Artemis 2 is Artemis 1 was completely uncrewed. Artemis 2, we're actually going to put astronauts on board and send them on a very similar flight path. Rice says the Artemis 1 flight was the only way they could gather real data on how the rocket would perform during events like booster separation. This is the first time we've been outside of the magnetosphere, which is kind of a donut-shaped protective um, force field, if you will. And you definitely have to get beyond that in order to get to the moon. We're going to need to understand how to... Uh, protect our astronauts, especially since they're going to be out there for so long. Three takeaways from the November launch. The performance of the rocket was key. It hit target orbit for the capsule within three nautical miles. They have mountains of data. I'm told they have more data than all the printed material in the Library of Congress. And get this, 10 small satellites were also launched to collect more science data. And what makes Artemis quite a bit different than Apollo is uh, it's going to include uh, women and the first person of color. Artemis 2 is slated to launch in May 2024 at the Kennedy Space Center. And a North Carolina astronaut could be selected. KJ Jacobs, WCNC Charlotte.